is Janice Cobb of Seeing My Pet ID Tag. Engraved with your pet's info, they allow emergency personnel to start care for your pets if you're sick or injured. Head over to SaveMyPetIDTag.com and explore products. They ensure peace of mind for you and for your four-legged family. Do you say I do? How about I dog? I cat. Guess what's happening? Dogs, cats, the well-behaved kind, are starting to show up at weddings. How do you wrangle them when you got all the other stuff happening for weddings? Well, our special guest has that knowledge. At this time, please give pause and applause to an outstanding professional pet sitter, <laughs> Jill Merjeski. Hey, Jill. Do you I say I do? Pet. Do you say I dog? Do you say I cat? I say all of them. Yes, I do all, of course. And everybody, I met her a couple years ago because I write a pet column for people that live in Palm Beach County, Florida, along the coast. It's called the Coastal Star. And I was really impressed. She's very innovative. She's very creative and especially very dedicated to caring for your pets. And Jill, how, just a little background. Before you be, launched your own professional pet sitting business, were you, I don't know, a brain surgeon, a drummer in a rock and roll band? What did you do? <laughs> I wasn't that cool. I actually lived in Philadelphia and I worked in higher education for about 14 years. So I had my master's degree in educational counseling and then wow. went right to the university sector. So I was a senior academic advisor. And then I decided in 2016 to move down here to South Florida. I've always wanted to start a pet care company. I have notes from when I was in my early 20s with different price points. And of course, time went by and I decided now is the time. So I got down here in 2016. I started independent contracting as a pet sitter. I did that pretty much around the clock. And then in 2017, September of 2017, I launched Jill's Next Door. And then it just sort of evolved from there. It's a hard job because you typically are getting up early and goodbye, a long weekend sleeping in, right? So what yeah. made you say, I want to do this? I, I do enjoy the flexibility of my own schedule. I always have. I kind of work at a very fast pace, so I move things along. I'm very much a night owl, so I do a lot of my creative work at night, a lot of the test type stuff during the morning. But before I was managing and owned the company, it was a lot of dog walking, pet sitting, and all these other services as a solo as an independent provider, which is a lot. Anyone that knows that they're, when they're working on the field and trying to grow the business and establishing your presence on social media, creating the LLC or the sole proprietorship, yeah. there's so many different factors to consider. So you okay. really have to manage your time well. This business is 365, seven days a week, holidays, weekends. So we don't close. so And you don't really seem to, to mind that, though. It, it have flexibility in your schedule, but uh, when people are looking for things like uh, Christmas holidays and uh, Thanksgiving, uh, you're typically on the job. I'm typically on the job, and so is the team. They're actually on the field. They work really hard, and that's the money-making time, the holidays. So they're usually pretty happy to work. <laughs> so when is your typical uh, Thanksgiving? Do you do it, like, on a Tuesday? <laughs> We, you know what? I actually am able to get away on Thanksgiving um, because oh. my family is local. But for Christmas, we celebrate the week early or two weeks early so I can get up north and back, which is really nice and convenient. But mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, the month of November is our busiest time. I'm sure it is for a lot of companies across the board. So how many staffers do you have and about how many dogs, cats uh, do, you, do you provide service for? We have about... 550 clients. Wow. Um, we, yeah, we have 550 clients, 10 pet sitters. We have two IT and website managers. And I also have a small kitty rescue on the side. So we have some volunteers with that as well. So it really takes a village. There's a lot of hands involved, very strong, great team, very proud of everybody. 
So what are some of the more exotic pets that you take care for? Dogs and cats are beyond. Yes, generally, mostly it's dogs and cats, but we do have some small domestic animals. We've had hedgehogs before. We've had snakes, birds, all sorts of birds, fish, all sorts of fish, just mostly cats and dogs, though, all with their own special personalities and unique characteristics, which we love. What's been the largest dog you've taken care of? Oh, boy. Oh, probably my friend, actually, who just lost her pup. He was a big guy. His name was Lloyd. But yeah, I mean, we just we have to act as professionals, take control of the leash and make sure that we have a good handle. And well, what kind of dog was Lloyd? How big was he? He was, oh, my gosh, he was like way over 100 pounds. What was he? <laughs> We've had St. Bernard's, the big dogs. What, what is yeah. it? Yeah. Bernese Mountain Dog Mix. We've had Bernese, St. Bernard's. St. Corsos. Blanking, yeah. blanking on the name, but yeah. That's okay, but he, yeah. he had a lot to, yeah. What's been the like smallest dog you've ever taken care of? How little? Probably a little Chihuahua or a Yorkie. Yeah, okay. they're, they are. You fit them in the palm of your hand, right? They fit them in the palm of their hand. You can't even, they're smaller than cats usually, but usually they have the most personality. And they're barking up a storm and talking and one thing's their way. That's I've, I've seen that. They think that they're bigger than they are. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And you, your title of your company is Jill's Next Door Dog Walking and Pet Services. So that's a big umbrella. We're going to dive in more about the wedding aspect, but what other services? Dog walking, come on, give us people a rundown. We have dog walking, pet sitting. We have special needs pet sitting. We have travel pet sitting, canine aqua fitness. We have house checked for um, clients without pets. I've actually made a list because we have so many. We have hotel, Airbnb, and rental pet sitting visits. Nice. Uh, we have add-on concierge services to our pet sitting visits. So if anybody needs extra dog food or something picked up or some home waiting service, we, we definitely have those on to accommodate our clients. I have a pet care business consulting for those who are thinking about starting their own pet care company. It's a one hour service. Oh, nice. Um, so I kind of give them a lot of the foundation of what they would need and where to go and um, the different resources and associations and the tests and any anything that they can ask, I've probably done. So um, I have that as well. And finally, the wedding pet attendants. So are you packing some Duracells? I mean, I don't know. How much sleep do you get? And do you sleep when you sleep? You sleep hard? Um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I always feel, and I think a lot of pet sitters say this, it'll slow down next week. It'll slow down next <laughs> week. It never does. So I'm constantly chasing my tail, but it's always oh. good things, pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. It's great things. And I find that when I'm working from the heart, it just comes naturally. So I want to provide our clients with full service and anything that we're trained or can learn. We want to offer that to our clients. I, I wish I lived closer to you, seriously, because you're the kind of professional pet sitter I love. Hey, Thank everybody, you. we're speaking with uh, Jill Merjeski. She is the owner of Jill's Next Door Dog Walking and Pet Services. It's located in Palm Beach County. Highland Beach is the city, I guess. You serve a lot of the cities up and down there. How do people find out about your service? What's the site? We can go to jillsnextdoor.com. All of our service details and pricing is there. You can meet our team on our page. Every sitter has a bio, a picture, and a video. And just find more resources. We have um, pet advocacy uh, listed there. We have all of our community sponsorships. Um, we have online dog training, online cat training for you. Nice. We partner with a professional pet portrait photographer. So there's a ton of resources. Our blog okay. is a wealth of information as well. So come to jillsnextdoor.com. That sounds great. Hey, everybody, we're going to dive into the notion that, yeah, your dog, your cat can be at your wedding and not cause a uh, oh when we take after we come back from this break. So you all know the drill. Sit, stay. We'll be right back. Hey, have you heard? Four-Legged Life has a new digital newsletter. Here, let me show you how you get yourself subscribed. So you just type in four 
Legged Life, and that'll take you to the website. There we go. And this magic thing just appears, and you type in your email address. I'll use, let's see, how about coolest dog ever at gmail.com. <laughs> That's me. And then you just click on this uh, thing here. There you go. It's the new digital newsletter from Four Legged Life. Get subscribed today. All right. I teed it up. You got the groom. Check. You got the bride. Check. You got the wedding venue. Check. And your beautiful, beloved dog and cats are sitting back at home going, what about us? Can you pull off a wedding and have your dog or cat be part of it? Our guest, Jill Merjeski, says, yes. She is the owner of Jill's Next Door Dog Walking and Pet Services. It's based in Palm Beach County, Florida, in Highland Beach. And she has a whole lineup of wedding, pet wedding attendant options. I said I do. You say I dog. So bring it on, Jill. Tell us what made you say, I'm going to add wedding services to my uh, professional pet portfolio. Boy, that was a lot of peas. <laughs> that was a lot of peas. I think it's when, for me, as I'm running the business, I think I try to think outside of the box and how to really accommodate our clients, what their needs are, what they're looking for. And a lot of our clientele is in 20s, 30s, 40s, beyond, and they're getting married. So we have requests, hey, we're going on our honeymoon, we're doing pet sit, can you pet sit? So of course, we jump on that yeah. and try to help our clients and then one day we did have a request and I said, why don't you have your pup in your wedding? And they're like, we'd even think about that. <laughs> How would we do that? All of our family and friends are at the wedding. So it's not like mom can bring him or someone Good else. Point. Can go. And everybody's in very nice clothes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So there's pet fur, there's all of that. And we were happy to accommodate that. So what we do is we really customize it to how the client wants to prepare their day. So generally we go over, we pick up the pup, we, we brush them, we get them dressed. Usually they have like bow ties or some sort of flowers or something. We get them all set and pretty. And then we transport them to the ceremony. Oftentimes okay. down here in South Florida, people are getting married on the beach. Oh, so yeah. It's it's more it's more relaxing. There's it's easier to get married on the beach with pets, I find. So we take them to the venue. We get there early so they can sniff around. We walk them. Good point. Um, yeah. So they kind of pets. feel like they know the place. Yeah. Right. Get all those scents in, get oriented, and then just try to keep them calm, relaxed as much as possible. Words of encouragement, treats when they're doing well. Make sure, especially in South Florida, they have water. If it's a longer day, if, if the bride and groom or the groom, groom, bride and bride, if they want longer hours, then we can do that. We bring the food. We work all of that out with the bride and groom before the ceremony. And that gives me peace of mind. Well, it, sure, you did. Can you share about a yellow lab named Cody? Yes, I can. Oh, well, tell God. us what that was like. He is a beautiful pup and he's so mild mannered. He was really one of the best clients. So we've had a relationship with this client for a while, a few years, and she was getting married. So I had offered, hey, why don't you have to have Cody in it, our Cody? <laughs> and he was really excited about it. And that's exactly what we did. We went over and she was actually getting ready for her own wedding and the photographer was there which was great. So we got some pictures before anything even started of the pup oh, altar. Good. And then I'm able, not only before the ceremony, but during and after, I'm able to sort of distract or pose the pup or the kitty as I need, right? Because the photographer is focusing on the wedding party and the bride and groom, all of those types. Yeah, and think about it. He's He or she has a camera in their hand. He's looking or she's looking around. And you got a dog, you're trying to get attention. I can't see a photographer uh, having a third hand to do a squeak or something. There, yeah, there's no way. Even, I mean, they have so much equipment and they've got the lighting and it's hot. So it's a lot to work out, a lot of energy. So what we do is I focus on the pet. I'm standing right behind the <laughs> photographer. Like a crazy person. It's actually funny because the <laughs> party's laughing at me. Yeah. <laughs> 
where they bring their favorite toy and I'll hold it up here and it really works well. So was I, that Cody's? What was Cody's toy? Do you remember? It was a little squeaky. He loved his toy. So I just had it right over the photographer's head. And of course, we figure out all the logistics so we can talk to photographers, just give them a heads up about what we're doing, kind of take the pressure off of them with the pup. I mean, trying to photograph an animal, it's you have to have yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Well, the other thing I like is because this is a viable business that's growing. And I know that other pet sitters are looking into it or creating it. And, and you actually were invited to be a vendor at a major bridal and wedding expo. Yes, that is. Tell us about that's really exciting. So we're doing a bridal expo in West Palm Beach at the convention center. And they usually attract about 1500 people. Wow. Um, Sorts of wedding vendors, photographers. And then and there's Jill. <laughs> then there's Jill. It was really funny because they, they actually called me and they said, we've never had anything like this before. And I'm like, that's amazing. Is that good? And he's like, she said, that's amazing. It's something we've never thought of, but it's a great idea. So we got everything ready. We're going to be there. We're going to see all the excitement and just share more information about us and how we can make their day or special event even more special with their entire family. I, I, I just think that you are just watching the trends. You're an entrepreneur. Where did you get that? Get up and go and let's try something new creativity. Where did that come from? Well, thank you. I think I've always naturally been creative, but I get really excited and I have passion behind it. So it's just such a drive. I, I usually just think, what's the worst that can happen? What's yeah. the worst that can happen? I mean, <laughs> even at the wedding, anything can happen with a dog. Dogs are unpredictable. What if the dog goes to the bathroom in the middle of the aisle? Anything can happen. So what? Um, what's your contingencies? I'm sure you got a lot of cleaning supplies. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. We have to pack a lot. <laughs> but at the end of the day, people laugh. Unexpected things happen. We hope it doesn't. We make sure the pup goes to the bathroom beforehand. We walk them. But when things happen, you just have to have a positive outlook and just laugh about it and say, hey. Well, yeah, yeah you, you, you know, if they say I do, you don't want to do do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And I like that. Yeah, you can have it. You can have that. You can have that. Do the, have any of the pets ever woofed a vow or anything for the couple or okay you know what in the background of a photo but that was okay that yeah. was we can edit that out the dog saying i agree they should be married yes, <laughs> Double yes. treats for me now <laughs> yes it's oh really my gosh. Exciting time. Uh, uh we only have about a minute left but is there you want to do a shout out to your small kitty rescue how people can help them what you Absolutely. do? Absolutely. It's called Jill's Next Door Dog Walking, or excuse me, Jill's Next Door Feline Alliance Program. But we partner with all the local rescues. My main partner is all about the cat's animal rescue. And we take cats in the community and we transport them up north to our partner rescue where they get adopted in a heartbeat. So we do a lot of work in the community with getting cats TNR, getting them adopted, getting them medical and all those types of resources. It's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding so we're happy to help so any parting message about to say to people who are thinking about having a wedding and pets are so much part of our family now they really are i would say definitely consider it we have a free consultation if you want to give us a call go to jillsnextdoor.com forward slash weddings and you'll see all the service packages um testimonials pictures and we can have a free phone call and just see if, if it's doable for you. But I really encourage it. Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with all of our Four-Legged Life content. Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life.